All right, welcome to Photoshop Live. This week we'll be discussing toy photography tips and tricks, um, how to edit it correctly, and create some of the effects in this image. So this image you're looking at right now is one of the recent ones I've done uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, people have asked me, how did I put this together? Uh, originally, I was planning on showing the entire process from start to finish, but I think I'm going to just focus for now on uh, Optimus Prime itself, as I don't see a lot of tutorials on how to make images look this way for the background i can show you a lot of different tech, uh, techniques and tutorials uh, that are already available online to show you how to make this effect but basically it's matte painting or um compositing techniques uh, the same stuff they use in the, in the movies same kind of techniques um, it's a little more of a stylized version of it um like i said there's many tutorials that are already on there just look up matte painting um hopefully in the future i will get into showing you exactly tips to make it look um this way for the full image but for now i'm just going to work on focus on prime and how to make prime um look this way so i'm going to show you how to do the specific lighting for this how to do the glow effects grunge tutorials uh how to get the grunge look on him uh as glow and other things like that to make it look um more pristine and more um, fancier than what you usually get to see with uh, toy photography uh, everybody has their own style so this is the kind of the way i'm going to do it so I'm going to show you basically how to take the um, actual images first. That's the very important um, part of it. So here we go. Let's move over to first. All right. First things first, it's very important the manner in which you take your photos. You cannot just take it um, with your handheld camera, you must have this on a tripod. Tripod is very, very important for this image. Without it, this will not work because it really relies on layering images over images to create the right effect. So, hold on. God, I'm getting thirsty. All right, so the first thing first, make sure you have your tripod set up correctly, right? Really doesn't matter what how fancy your camera is or anything, you can do this with a a Canon T2i, whatever can you can do with one as long as you can put it on a tripod, that's the only thing that matters. Um, so the first thing you want to do when doing this, as I said, tripod is very important, set it up correctly. And the way this is kind of lit is only lit with one light, no more than one light. You don't need more than that to do this. You can spend hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, and getting specific lighting effects, uh, lighting the rigs and stuff. But to be honest, it's not important at all. Uh, because you're on a tripod, the object is not moving. Therefore, there's no need to have fancy um, three, four, five, six layers of lighting uh, techniques. So very important, since this is going to be editing, you're going to be editing your image um, in Photoshop, you want to make sure that you're getting the most pristine quality image. So when you're doing this, make sure your ISO here is at the lowest possible setting. I have it on ISO 100, so you should get a crisp image without a lot, without a lot of um, graininess to it. So you get a nice clear image to work with when you're doing compositing. I think my camera could do ISO 50, but for now I just leave it at 100 usually, um, or I leave it most of the time. Now, and the second most important thing is your f-stop. So you need to have your f-stop uh, relatively high. The reason why you need to have it relatively high is that you want to have a nice clear image. You don't want to have a lot of bokeh effect. You can add it later on if you want. Um, but generally you want to have a nice clear image to work in all the, so all the, so you can have a lot of detail in, in the image so you can work with it. Um, I can show you some later on some techniques to create a nice bokeh effect uh, with some gradients, um, but it's really not important for that. So just basically have, make sure that your image is really clear. Second most important, the third most important thing here is your shutter speed. Now you want to make sure your shutter speed is extremely low or low enough so you have enough um, light getting to your camera. Because since your f-stop is so high, the image is going to be very dark. Uh, so you want to have your shutter speed really low enough to capture enough light um, coming onto your image. So once you have those three things set up, uh, next thing, I, I guess, it, it's sometimes important, it depends on what kind of effect you're trying to do, um, which is um, what focal length your image is at. So I have my focal length at 45, so I relatively have it relatively close to the object. Um, the reason why is when you shoot it from a closer angle, um, it creates a grandiose effect, like it's uh, 
larger than life, right? So the closer you are to image um, at a low angle creates makes it look more um, makes it look bigger than it would be uh, if you shoot it far away. So if you shoot this at an 85 millimeter, 100 millimeter, which I've done for other ones, because they're going to create a different effect. But if you want the transform to look really big and monstrous, or at least um, grandiose, shoot it at a low angle, at a relatively large uh, focal length. That way you can have it um, look a lot bigger. So once you have your camera set up, once you have your shutter speed, f-stop, all that set up, what I do recommend when shooting this is to have uh, a shutter release um, that way you don't you your camera will not move because it's very important that your camera does not move when you're shooting these because uh, you the way you do the, do the layering it will really fuck up completely if you if it's off a little bit right so once those things are set up um, what we do with the lighting technique here as you can see I'm lighting it from many different angles so basically what you do is you take your light in this case, I'm just using a regular flashlight, nothing more fancier than that. And I'm literally just clicking the shutter release, putting the light where I want it to be, and waiting for the camera to take a shot. Um, as you can see here in the shadows, it's not very sharp. I know a lot of people, if you use a flashlight too close, it'll get a little sharp angle because the closer the object, closer the flash, uh, closer the light is to the object, the uh, sharper the, the, the sharper the uh, edge of the shadows will be. Um, so you don't really want that. So what you want it to have is a nice diffused look. Well, it kind of depends on what it's in the style you're looking for. But for this, I want a very diffused look. So the best thing to do to make it a little, a little bit more diffuser is to literally put something that's going to diffuse the light and make it spread out and be softer. So what I basically do is I have um, a white piece of paper sometimes um, right in front of the light source. That way, when it's uh, being hit, it creates a nice diffused effect. Um, usually, you want to do that for the beauty shots. If you're doing it from the back, it doesn't matter because you want more of a harsh, um, brighter um, light. But from the front, um, you want to make sure that it's very soft. So I did that for this one. And you kind of just go around, click your shutter release, and go around and take shots from every single angle that you could possibly take it from. Get every highlight you want, every highlight you need. Um, so you can see from here, I want it's more of a sharper. Um, and you pretty much just go around your entire object. Don't worry about this lights or my hand be, or your hand being in it. Um, for this technique, it's really not important. Um, and go around it. See, I have all these highlights I can use. So I'm going to use all these little highlight sections right here. So. God, I'm thirsty. So you continually go around it. Once you've done that, um, you head over to Photoshop. So here's the original image. I mean, here's the uh, composited version. And here's what comes out once you um, have your images. So let's see. Let's fix this up a little bit here. So you can see I use a light and technique here I'll explain that in a second okay so the first thing you want to do when you have your image especially for this technique if you plan on doing compositing styles like this you can do it different different a lot of different ways but for this um, the first thing you want to do is you want to cut it out cut out the image from the background so there are many different techniques I use a combination of um, right here was it the marquee tool no I use the polygon lasso tech, uh, tool on the image and I cut around it. And sometimes I'll use the, the brush technique. You can find your own ways of doing it. Uh, everybody has their own little styles. I don't suggest using the, um, what's this? The, uh, the shape tool for it is it, it's kind of annoying to use. And it's not really important. It's not really useful in the end. So what you do is you take your original image, you cut it out from the background. I like to have something in the back here so I can see um, when, it, when it's cut out, you can see exactly the areas you want. Now, the easiest way to cut it out, usually, is I use a brightness contrast for an image like this if I can't see it too well. And I'll add it on top and then just brighten it up to wherever I want so I can see all the edges and areas I want 
um, to cut out. So don't need that anymore. So like I said, um, put your layer here, the, the, the black around one, that's your original, and then put another one on top. So you're gonna layer all your images that you wanna use on the top and you will use the lighten technique. So when you use the lighten technique, it um, doesn't make things brighter. It just uses whatever the brightest area is and it composites it over the other images without having it uh, look like it's getting brighter and brighter and brighter. It's a very useful technique for this kind of um, uh, toy editing. So make sure you have this one here. Uh, get the lights you want to use. Use a light technique. Light technique. Over and over and over again. Bam. So now I have the entire thing here lit up in many different angles. I'm not going to use every single angle here as it really is not that important. Uh, I mean, it, it, you want to make sure that you have the lights available in any direction you want. So you can, um, depending on what kind of light source, as you can see with this image here, I have uh, light sources coming from the left. I have light sources coming from the right, a little bit from the background, sheens and everything. So you want to find whatever mood you're looking for, for this image. Now, the way I kind of figure out what kind of mood I'm looking for when doing this is I kind of will start just painting in a rough idea of what I'm looking for um, before. Sometimes you, you kind of know what you're looking for, but you want to have like references for it. So what I do in this case, as you can see that um, I want a little bit of reference here. So I usually start with a nice darker color sometimes. So I know this is gonna be my ground plane. They're too bright. So I know this is kind of giving me like my, my ground plane here. Um, this is where I kind of want the ground plane to be for this, right? And I know I want a little bit of shadow in there just to keep, make it look a little bit realistic. You don't necessarily, you're not trying to make it look like hundred percent, but you want to kind of get it with your idea and where it's going to go. So if you guys understand how painting works, it's not a difficult, you just literally just making it look kind of the way you want. And you know, which kind of where I want my objects to be, where I want my lighting to come from. Remember having something similar to this. I don't have that version anymore, but like you just said, I want my lighting to be from the background. I want to have something in here, just a rough sketch where I wanted my things to go. I wanted buildings to be in the background, um, like this, covering it up and then painting some areas of, like this, just so I can kind of get a reference of where I want, um, stuff to be coming from. right you don't have to make it perfect so now i kind of get an idea this i'm going to have a light source um coming from this angle i want a light source in the background area like this um and kind of a light source hitting hitting this area so i, I just want these areas to be lit up now what's when you're doing toy photography you want to kind of have it there's many different ways of doing it but for this i want a very dramatic feel when you took taking a, a dramatic making dramatic images um, a very Hollywood thing to do is to make sure things are more backlit than frontlit. Um, so I usually will start with whatever image is the first one here. So I can see I have a nice image, a light. I love this, the way this light is just hitting this side, but you can't see all of Optimus Prime. And this one, it's kind of the same, but I don't want to have as much light in the bottom area. So what you kind of can do is just use your brush and kind of paint out areas you don't. So I use, usually use a, uh, a nice soft brush and you just paint out areas you don't want to be on here. So I don't want light too much here. Um, I usually don't want it here. What's this? Yeah, just enough, not too much until it feels the way I want it to look, right? 
and I go to the next image. Okay, this is lit, lit perfectly. I love the way it's getting create a nice glow in the background here. Not too much. I kind of kind of leave that the way it is. Yeah, I like the way it is now. Uh, and then this one's another one here. Now, like I said, I don't want too much glow from the bottom area. I want to kind of have it black and it's kind of light here. So, like I said, do kind of the same thing where you're kind of taking out the areas you don't want. So I'll show you again, a little bit of scratch. So I don't want light too much from the bottom here. I really don't like that. And I don't like this light here, but I'm loving these highlights. I may just lower this a little bit. There you go. Now this one here is another light source. From the side, I don't think I did much to change that. No, I don't like that. And this one, actually, it's fine. And your last light source is this, kind of the same thing. Um, a little bit more of a highlight in it. I don't like this. And you can see it kind of just a little bit more highlight on the gun area. So you kind of got to go in and try to find exactly where you want your light sources to come from and make it perfect. Now, I may make some changes. It's not going to be exactly like the original images here. Um, kind of go in and find the areas you like. So, there you go. So, it's kind of like that. So, you just kind of work in the areas you want to have the lighting. Um, like I said, I want lighting from the bat, from the bottom here. Lighting from the top, from the right side. Um... Well, maybe we'll make this a little bit more dramatic in this area. So I don't want too much light here. All right. And you kind of just merge your images together and make it exactly where you want your highlights. I don't want this highlight here. I don't like that. That's fine. All right, perfect. So that's the kind of the way I want it to look for this one. As you go in, you can refine different areas to make it look a bit... Uh, a little bit different. So once you have that, um, and you kind of have the lighting you want, so say in, in this case, I want the lighting to be, um, as you can see with this one, I have a little bit yellow. So I want it to have a yellowy light. So it's, what I do is I use, I use the same thing. I use a composition technique. I mean, a painting technique, kind of get the lighting I'm looking for in the areas. Uh, it's not gonna be perfect what kind of lighting I want. So I want a kind of a yellow lighting here, just to give myself a reference to what kind of lighting I want. And you find wherever that is in your image that's creating that light. So you can see right here, the image that's creating this light is um, the first layer at the bottom left. So what you want to do for this is you want to click on, there's two ways of doing this. I will go with, um, let's try hue saturation for this one for now. So you click on your hue saturation and you want to make sure that this hue saturation effect is only affecting this specific layer. So you want to merge it down, merge it so it only clicks on just this layer. So what you do is you click on it and you alt click and you'll see a little arrow pop up and click on that. And now this adjustment layer is only going to affect um, this uh, layer itself. So what you do now is you go to hue saturation and you can now change the color to whatever you want right you can see i can make it yellow green blue whatever but in this case i'm going to use the colorize feature i believe i used this one last time and you can see you can change the lighting for whatever you want it to be so i want it to be more yellowy i guess more yellow and just affect it the way you want it to look perfect yeah, let's go with a more orangey yellow because it's more like a fire effect. But you can also, if you don't want to use that technique, you can also use what's known as the um, color balance technique. Kind of doing the same thing. And you can go into specific areas of your image and change the hue, saturation, the midtones. So the midtones will be something in the, in the gray area of your image. Uh, you can change it up a bit or you can go to the highlights and change it to whatever you want. Just a little more control if you want to get more detailed into it and control every aspect of it um, that you want. But for now, we're just going to go with um, hue saturation instead of color balance. I may come back to using hue uh, color balance in the other ones, but for now, 
very simple technique. Use your uh, your hue saturation to make it look the whatever lighting you want. Now I know for a lot of this image here, it looks kind of like it's a bluish tint. That's more of an effect I use overall to create that effect with the uh, color balance. But for now, I'm just going to have this yellow light being kind of my only light. But actually, you know what? Let's change. What's this layer? Let's change this layer to be a little bit more blue. Uh, we'll actually use a color balance for this this time. All right. And then let's go to my highlights, actually. And change the highlights to whatever color you want. So you want it to be a little bit more blue. Put your highlights in the blue. Actually, let's try it this blue. And go wherever you want. No. Just play around trying to find the right color you want to use for it. Let's say a little bit there for that. So originally it was this color, and now it's a little bit more of a blue tone, a blue tint. So let's save this. Make sure to always save your images. Oh, another thing when working with this type of images, uh, image, uh, for working with this uh, image for this video, I'm not working on the full resolution. But basically, make sure when you're editing uh, to go to at least 16 bits of information, especially if you're taking a photo. Um, just so you have more color, color information to work with when editing. So when you're raising or brightening or darkening an area, you'll have more information in those dark and light areas to work with so that things don't get blown out. Because um, if they get blown out, you kind of kind of makes it a little bit harder to work with. Uh, but for this demo, I'm just working with an 8-bit because I'm not kind of doing it too too detailed. Okay, so once you have that, you kind of gotten your color the way you want. Um, I'll leave this in the background here. The next thing you want to do, uh, what next thing I'm going to show you is how do you get, so you can look in this image right here. How do you get these grungy textury areas? As you can see here, there's a lot of grunginess to these areas. It's not pristine. It has a bit of grunge there, a grunge. Uh, I may have taken it off in that point. Um, there's a lot of grungy areas now uh, on Optimus Prime to make him look like he's worn down. Um, worn down and beat down so it looks a little bit more um, more interesting so the way to do that it's very very simple it's a technique you use in 3d a lot uh, just literally just adding textures so you want to do is find the kind of textures you're looking for so in this case um, i have many textures i've downloaded uh, or taken myself um I'll show you some of them Best to have a lot of um, reference images and grunge textures to work with when taking these things. It makes it a lot easier. So as you can see here, I have a lot of uh, textures that I'm going to use for this image. So in this case, I'm going to use this one here. Uh, right here. So get your textures that you want to use. Something with grungy metalness, look like it's rusty. So I'm going to use this image here. It has enough rust looking to it that's going to create a nice... Um, rusty looking uh, image, like a uh, worn down uh, Optimus Prime. That's one thing I do like about the new Transformers movies, they have, make them look more rustic rather than pristine, because uh, it create a nice uh, effect to it. So basically, it's not poor right now. So when you drop it down, I like to work and make sure it's, um, nah, I guess I can work inside here. So when you have it, the image, you can put it inside the folder if you want. It's all up to you. Um, what I'll do in this case, I will merge this into a folder. Working with folders makes things a lot easier uh, when doing these things. Um, folders within folders, uh, you don't get as bogged down with a bunch of crap everywhere. So I take the, sh the uh, test, um, the texture, I put it in the image. Now I want to make sure that this rest, I can have it just over the entire thing if I really wanted to and just use your layering techniques um, you can see it kind of already starts to look exactly the way you want just by using a, one of the possible techniques here. So you just kind of go through it, find the one you want. There's many different ways 
There's no right or wrong way of doing this. Uh, I'm just going to use most likely, hmm, let's see. I don't want to use multiply this time. Usually, usually, usually I go between multiply or um, overlay. I don't want it to brighten it up too much. I'm gonna probably just gonna use multiply for this because um, it creates a rustic effect without brightening your image. You don't want to always brighten your image. Now, I don't want to have this rustic look all over the entire image. I don't want that at all. I want it to be in specific places and I kind of want it to have it angled in the right direction of the object, um, the right object, the right direction that the object is facing. So this is a kind of a cube sh shape right here. I want to have it flow over this texture over in this area a little bit more than over the entire thing. So the best way to do that is use your transform tool. So you can control T. Once you have the control T, you can make it a little bit smaller by holding shift. It'll keep the um, proportions correct. And if you right click on it, and go to distort. You can distort the image over the area you want it to be in. This way, when it's over, you can, you can overlap a little bit. You don't want to have it uh, lose space, but have it overlap, but kind of in the perspective that you want the image to be in. Reason why the rest will look more realistic. Uh, it could be for any kind of texture you want. You want to make sure it's pers the perspective is correct um, just so it looks more realistic. So I'm going to click enter on that and create a mask for that. Usually what I do is I re invert the mask and kind of paint it in. That way, by doing that, you uh, can put the rest areas where you want. So I'm going to control I that, zoom in and pick your brush and then go into wherever you want. And put a little bit of rust where you want it to be. Don't have it too uniform because um, rust doesn't kind of work in that area in that way. And there you go. Right, and I'll just do this one more time with another area. That's kind of it. Now, sometimes you want to have the darker areas more, so you sometimes need to do an adjustment layer on your um, your textures themselves just so it blends in more. So use an adjustment layer here. The one you're going to use is the Levels tool. Levels tool allows you to pick the areas you want. You want to have a little darker there or a little bit... Uh, Take out some of the bright and certain areas or darkest areas. You gotta kind of play with it to find out where you want it to be. I don't want it too dark there. But I don't want it too. I kind of want it brighter. The darker areas, and there you go. So it's kind of just laying over. Perfect. Actually, I wanted this a little bit less on this area. It's a little bit too. Where are you working? Right, brush. There you go. I want a little bit less there. Perfect. So it has a little bit of a grunge texture to it. Now I'm just going to do that again in a different area. I'm not going to do the entire thing, but you can kind of see where this comes into play. So control T, same thing. Kind of put it where you want to have it. Um, control T. Um, use the distort tool. Um, I'm going to have it just on his arm area here. Doesn't have to be 100% perfect as long as it's kind of lined up the way you want it to be. Bam. Um, mask it. I'm going to use the multiply tool. Right. And then control I. Brush it in. Kind of where I want it to be. Very simple technique, creates a lot of cool effects. Even if I wanted to, let's say, do something different and I wanted to add cracks. Let's say I want to add some weird looking cracks on this. Like his, his armor has been destroyed. I need to get some textures for this. And things. 
So much photos to look through. Where are you? Okay, I was going to go on the internet for this. So let's get one from the internet. Make it a lot easier on myself. Street Cracks. Now I find whatever texture I'm looking for here. What kind of texture I want. Let's say I want some cracks in his armor. Right here. I guess a good one or even one of these would be perfect. Whatever. Usually want to have your own stuff, but for purposes of this, and I'm too lazy to look for my own right now. I will find a nice one. What's well, looking good? That's good enough. I like it. Works. Find the images you want. And pretty much do the same technique again. Control V. Now let's say I want to have maybe a right here on his left arm or his right arm. Kind of the same thing. I kind of want to have his texture there. So Control T. Same crap. Distort. You also use the perspective thing, but I find this one's a little bit easier since it's not... Um, There's no, there's no limits to the direction you want to have, which you do get with the perspective tool. Now I don't want, I kind of want to have it a little bit more like this for this area. There you go. So once you have that, um, try to find what kind of layering technique you want to use. Let's see what I got here. Multiply tool. Actually, I'll use a multiply tool like this. And I don't want it to be this dark. So I kind of want to have the dark areas of it but without having too much of the light areas. So what you need to do is do it once again use an adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer and kind of find where you want it to be. So we're lowering the dark areas. Like that, right, until it kind of blends into the way you want it to look. Bingo. It's a little too much, so I'm going to put a layer on that, control I it, and kind of just paint it back where I want it to be. Right. Paint it in. You can add a little highlights in it later on. I will show you a little bit of that technique. Um, and actually add a little bit of stuff in there. There you go. A little bit different to the original version, which is fine. You find new ways of doing things every time you make it. I kind of like that. So now his hand looks kind of damaged, although I kind of want it a little bit bigger. I don't want it to be that small, so I'm just going to maybe make it a little bit bigger like that. There you go. I prefer that a little bit more, I guess. Nah. Let's see. Hmm. Basically, you kind of just play around, find what you're looking for, the way you want it to look. B. There you go. What's wrong here? Oh, wrong layer. Um, there you go. So kind of find where you want it to be. And I usually don't usually sometimes I use a Wacom for this, but I don't usually like using it. I prefer just using good old mouse. As I find a little bit easier to work in these scenarios. There you go. So you got a little crack on his armor there. Just to create the effect like he's um 
more beaten down, more worn torn rather than just a pristine image. Now, next thing I have on this image is, as you can see here, I have a lot of this paint is worn off. It's not like he's uh, a new truck, more of a grungy look. Now this is actually very simple to do. Um, not as complicated as you would imagine it to be. It's just a matter of where you do it rather than how complicated it is. So basically for this, um, create a new layer, create a new adjustment layer above whatever Optimus is. So in this case, I'm going to use a hue saturation because it's kind of like this little white version of it. With less, um, it's a whiter version of it, a lighter version with less saturation because it's, it's the underpaint of it. It's not, um, the original paint. So what, most when you have a car that's being made is an underpaint and there's also the overpaint, the overcoat. So in order to do that, we're going to do kind of do the same thing. So I'm going to have this adjustment layer, just effect Optimus Prime here. And what I'm going to do is going to set, lower the saturation, sorry, the wrong one, lower the saturation down to almost zero and brighten it up. Right. Um, let's do another hue conch, do a hue. Let's do actually a brightness contrast on that. Maybe this will be the trick. Yeah. Good brightness contrast right there. So this is kind of be the underpaint of it. Um, so basically let's start with just, what's the best way of doing this? Okay, so I'm gonna start with this, Control I, reverse it. Control I, reverse it. So it's gonna start with the hue saturation. Um, actually, just get rid of this for now. I'll come back to that in a second. Let's make this easier on myself. Okay, so what you need to do is here we go so get the brush you need so you don't want to go with a soft brush you want to have something more grungy texture looking so i usually use one of these square brushes like this right and i maybe put a little bit higher on here and go to the areas that you want to have your grunge texture now you don't want to have it everywhere on your image as you can see i have it just in specific areas and those specific areas are areas of overlap or areas where you will get a lot of war wear and tear. So if you look at a car or something, you notice that it'll be near the edges of the object and areas that overlap. So for instance, um, this area here is an overlap area because you have two different sections. So you kind of just paint it in. And since you're using the original image, um, you just paint it nice in, make it look a little bit grungy, make your brushes a little bit bigger, smaller to find the look you're looking for, right? Perfect. And then add, I'm gonna add a little bit here, right in this area. This stuff like this is a little bit easier with the Wacom, but honestly, it's not that important. Important to have one. Um, and just go around your image, adding all these little wear and tears everywhere you think it is so you're just literally just painting onto the hue saturation mask like that wherever you want i can use different kind of um brushes i want here a little bit more grungier ones but i kind of like just this square brush uh, or rectangular brush it's a little bit more simple as i can go back and forth by pressing x and just blending it in where I want. Sometimes you can kind of see in the underpaint of the object you're painting where it kind of is already resting. So you kind of kind of add it's a little bit of an effect in there already. And I kind of want to have a big one here. So I feel like this is going to be an area of wear and tear. So let's make a big splash of paint on there. And it's kind of like, just paint it out. Just paint it out where you want. Not going to be precise. There you go. A little bit wear and tear here. So edges are usually where you get a lot of wear and tear in objects. So just 
like I said, painted in those areas. Uh, if you look at a lot of video game textures um, or a lot of video game images, you'll see whatever, whenever you have an object, like a gun or something, you'll have a lot of these rustic areas almost on the entire object rather than just specific areas. It creates that nice, dirty, grimy feel all over everything. All right. So I'm going to add a little bit more here. You kind of will get the idea of how this all... You can be even more precise, you can start thinking about, okay, if this object is going to be rustic here, which is the way, which way does the object flow? If so, um, when he's actually on, when he's actually merged together as a truck mode, where are the edges and where do they blend together? Like where do they connect? So you can kind of add those rustic spots just in that area, right? Think about all these little things sometimes will make things look a bit more realistic when you start thinking about how the object actually functions. If this was a real object or a real um, Optimus Prime, that way it makes things look a bit more realistic. So I'm gonna add a little bit more rustic textures in certain areas here and I'm gonna call it a day. So you gotta get the idea. Maybe a little bit more here. A little bit more of a texture. Now, I like that at all. It's gonna leave it here for now. Do it to the arms, wherever you want. All right, a little bit more here, there, or wherever you want it to be. Yeah, I don't like this that much here. Let's see, I'll make it a little less rustic. Maybe a whole area of painting here is kind of a little bit chipped off. All right, make sure it's like here. You can go literally forever doing these things. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy. But once you start getting into it, you kind of just, you just go kind of crazy after a while and kind of just keep on doing it until you're done, until you find what you're looking for the way you want. Oops, wrong button. That was a quick mask too, which I hate using. All right. This is where the kind of where the artistry of it comes. If you ever worked in video games or anything, you kind of will understand this. If you haven't, well, now you do. Kind of a little bit more on the edge here. Don't make it too perfect. Make the brush size a little bit different, so you get a little bit different levels of textures on it. You can actually kind of make your own textures. I won't get into that. You kind of make your own stamp textures so you can get this to be perfect every single time. But I think it's a little bit more fun when you're doing it just on your own. Like this. So just kind of the edges areas, you kind of want to have it. Bingo. So now he has a more of a rustic feel. Let's add a little bit more rust here and beat up because this is kind of a very important, since he has a lot of textures here, it's kind of very important to have it in this area because he's kind of already been beat up in this area. All right. Bingo, bingo. And there you go. Just for now. I could put some more stuff in there, but I really don't feel like it right now. Just kind of get the idea of where you're supposed to have all these textures. So let's actually go back and clean up a little bit of this. Not really 100% happy with this stuff here. 
and you can see the texture is a little bit screwed up. So I'm going to use this brush actually for this and it's kind of just clean it up and where I want it to be. You can kind of go in um, in certain areas here and just kind of clean it up. Maybe have a little bit more grunginess back in here. All right. You can, like I said, you can go in for days finding every nuance, every area you want to add stuff to. But I'm just going to give you the general rules, general look of it. So I'm not going to have too much stuff inside since it's one on one plane. But sometimes it looks kind of cool when you have it on different planes. Um, like here. Don't want the middle because that is not part of the image. And there, there you go. Just a nice crack in the wall. Save my image. And there we go. So now you can see how you get um, this grunginess to the image uh, in literally no time at all. So the next thing you're going to see on this image is you're going to see a lot of, okay, right here. So what I have on here, I want to meet, I want him to look like he was, like he's been through a war or something, like he's actually in a fight or going to a fight and he's been attacked already. So I wanted to have something a little bit more beat up in the glass as well. So I added a texture here to the glass. So it's kind of the same techniques we used earlier. Um, used earlier for um, the other kind of textures. So I, pretty, mu pretty much you got to find what kind of texture you're looking for. So I found one that I had the glass already broken, which is this one right here. And I'm going to add that on to that specific area. So I'm going to drag and drop that over. And, no, oh, my bad. Drag and drop. There you go. Some reason it's not working the way I want it to. And I'm going to drag it on. And since it's still inside of just the Optimus area, I can kind of just move it to where I want without affecting anything in the background layer. Although I think I moved it wrong. Yeah, don't want that there. Okay, so there you go. And Control T distort and actually I think I had flipped it so try to find it the way you want it to look control T distort and zoom into where you want it to be doesn't have to be perfect because you can use a mask just to get in that specific area As long as you're following the lines of where you lines of where you um, want it to follow, you should be totally fine. So I kind of want to have it here, here, and here. Cool. Uh, enter. Uh, create a mask for it, and try to find what kind of way you want it to look. So, I like that one, but I kind of like this one a little bit better. So I'm gonna use this regular screen since it's mostly black. So as you can see, it's not 100% touching the, the objects so like I did before. We're just going to paint out that specific area. Use a nice light brush. And just kind of paint out that area so it fits, blends in nice into the image. Amazing. There you go. You can, you can if you want to be really hardcore, you can kind of make your and actually use the lasso tool and kind of make it perfect in there. I don't really feel like doing that. Uh, most of the time I don't use the lasso tool for this stuff. I just go straight to using an air of nice brushes. They find a little bit faster to use rather than um, using that. But it's up to you. There's many, many different ways of doing it. You can see it's starting to look like it's, it's kind of blended in there. Now, I may change this, see what I like better. Go around, always check and see what kind of other blending modes are available. Sometimes you'll get a cool effect you didn't think about earlier. So go through your blending modes. Okay, cool. So I'll stick with screen for now. Now you have this cool bullet area, but I, since this is glass and this is a black, it's darker in the back, you're gonna have to change this color here a little bit. Not 100%, just make it a little bit different there's a hundred different ways you can do this. Um, 
but I'm just going to do the simplest way possible. Which is to just paint in it a little bit darker. So I'm just going to paint in a little bit here. Nice soft brush. Very simple. Right? A little bit far. Get in there a little bit in some of the grooves. And I'm just going to lower the opacity to it just slightly. So it blends in. But it's not the same color as the other side. So, click, so it looks like it's an actual hole rather than just uh, an image over it. Bingo. There you go. Save that up again. So now you have the cracks in there. Give it a little bit uh, better look. So what else do we need to add on this to make it look like the other one? Okay. So another thing we have here is let's work on, okay, here we have in the image, the reflection area. So to make it look like it's more in the environment, you want to have that glass look on it it's a very very simple technique to create this glass effect it's very simple similar to the other techniques so let's create another layer so we need to have a nice reflection across here so it kind of it's reflecting the background uh the foreground seems so to have something in there to reflect these many different ways of doing it you can have it as realistic as possible but i still want to have something there to kind of have a reflection so in this case i will use the marquee tool and what you do is you go across the center plane of it or wherever you want the reflection to be Right, and since this is going to be already in the optics primary layer, it's not going to go too crazy. And what you want to do is find a nice big brush. Make sure it's a white or whatever color you want. I usually start with white since I can change the color of it any time I want. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to stick with a nice yellow. So I pick whatever yellow I want, as long as it's bright enough. And you're going to, as you can see, the marquee tool is connected to just this area. I want to invert that. So the marquee tool is going to ignore the bottom area. It's just going to do a nice fade. So take your nice big brush, pick a maybe 50% opacity or lower and just fade it. Maybe just fade it right there. Just a nice long fade, right? Perfect. And you can control D. Now you have kind of a nice fade inside of there. Um, as you can see, there's lots of other areas I don't want in there. So I'm just going to create a new layer. Invert that in again. B. Paint that in just like that. Perfect. And I want to have this under the glass layer. So it creates that effect and it's not going too much. So you can see you have a reflection in there already. I can go crazy wild with it. I can have another reflection. I can have buildings in there. Um, whatever you think the background should look like. In this case, I'm putting like a regular horizon. But if I was to do something a little more detailed than the other version, what I would do is I would create maybe a little bit jaggedy version of it in this. Which layer is this? Perfect. D. So what you would do is you go in with a hard brush or whatever way you want. Maybe put a city in there, something. It's a little bit more different, not as crisp or pristine. Maybe some mountains in there or something. It has something a little bit similar to that. And this one doesn't have to be perfect. It creates a little bit more mountain-esque or like there's something rather than just having a regular plane in there. And Is this yeah perfect actually make it a little bit smaller perfect there you go if you want to be really crazy you can have your own textures um what i have here already built next on this texture wall wood brushes I have some other brushes I can also do. You can, like I said, you can go completely crazy with this stuff. Um, so you can find the other brushes I have. Hmm. 
Hmm. Here's some brushes you could use. So for instance, I have brushes of entire cities already built out here. I'm not gonna show you how to make brushes, but what you can do in this case is I can do 100%, right? Control T it to where I want it to be. Actually, Control T, um, distort. Where do I want the city to be? Let's say I want the city to be right here. If you want to be really crazy. Let's say I want the city to be right there. Put the perspective up a little bit. You can use real cities as a texture, whatever you want. I'm going to control that as a mask, and I'm going to click delete, actually delete it, and bam. Now you have a full city in the background. looks a little bit more realistic than having just, um, just a flat line. Now, now that that's done, looks a little bit more better than the other version, but I don't feel like going back and changing the other original. Maybe I will. Who knows? Save that up again. I'm a huge uh, proponent of saving like almost every single time you can. Um, you never know when your computer is going to crash and you don't really want that to happen. So, so now they have this grungy look I want. What I want to do next is something I didn't really do much in the original, but I think I'll do in this one a little bit more is I am going to close the holes. Now, yes, it is a toy. And um, the thing about me is I don't like, want to look too much like a toy. I want it to look more realistic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close the holes or close the binding areas where the plastic is connected. Cause I don't really like those. It never looks right. It's like stuff like here in the metal, these L lines, you don't want them to have there, be there. Cause it kind of looks annoying. It's kind of something you're going to do in, near the end of your steps where you kind of satisfy with what you're looking for because it comes a little bit more difficult. Actually, you want to do either the first thing you do or the last thing you do. That way, the adjustments aren't going to be too extreme when it, you won't notice them um, later on because sometimes you'll notice these things because you, you adjust the layers under it or adjust the layers above it and you will um, change the uh, contrast or the uh, lightness or brightness of it and you don't want that. But for this case, I'm just going to have it on the top layer here. Um... Actually, you know what? Let's start, f let's get rid of them all. And let's go to the original. So let's turn off all these layers. All the layers here. Right, perfect. So you got the original image back the way that was pristine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way back to the first um, layer where I'm satisfied with the image. So create a new layer here. What you want to do is use this tool here. This is a lifesaver tool. It's called uh, the spot heal, I believe. I can't remember the name of these things sometimes. Come on. Yeah, spot healing tool. So you pick your spot healing tool. And what it's going to do is just you know, paint over it. And what it's going to do is it's going to find the pixels that are near it and copy clone it so the area to your painting over is completely disappeared. So this by painting over it just like that, bam. bam. Make sure you're using all layers. Bam, there you go. It's painting certain areas. And the same thing for this, you want to kind of paint over where you want it to be and it will kind of disappear. Sometimes you may have to go over it with the um it's way too big for brush. Go over with this clone stamp tool and find the area you want and just kind of stamp it out to make it look like it's completely gone. Bam, All right? And now you go in any other area you want that to be. Um, luckily this one doesn't have too many of them. I know a lot of the other um, ones tend to have a lot of these cut lines everywhere. I really don't like them, these plastic lines. I find they look really, in, they're kind of really annoying to look at. I think this one's a uh, plastic line. Actually, let me look at my Optimus Prime. See if, oh, 
See if there are any cut lines there. Is that plastic? Yeah, it looks like a plastic line in there, so I'm definitely going to uh, erase that from MP10. So start here, start there, bam, very simple. Delete it, delete it there, delete it there. Um, do as much as any way you want it to do, do it. Like I said, Clone Stamp and um, Healing Brush are the two best tools um, for doing this. Bingo. Getting other dust and scratches you don't want off too with this healing brush. Uh, it's really good for doing dust and scratches or if you're doing any kind of Photoshop stuff and you want to get rid of hair on an image. It's perfect for that as well. Uh, another cut line. See, this would be technically a cut line here. And I don't like cut lines. I really hate them. So in this case, I'm going to create another layer just so I have some working wiggling room when I think I can make mistakes. And I will just paint over that area. See, now I can just go in and use the eraser tool and erase wherever I do want it to be. Perfect. Uh, here's another cut line I don't like. Um, I'll get rid of one or two. I get rid of this one here, just because it's a more difficult one. As soon as I'll just, once I've 100% got it, I'll just merge them down together to make one image. So usually I'll start with this. That's good. Good. Don't like that one too much. If you like it, I just go in. Spot heal, merge over, and I will erase some of that. Good. It's a little bit better. And once I have that, I'm going to do the last piece here. I know it's a little plastic dent thing there. I really hate that. So let's get rid of that. And this one seems like a really easy one to do. It's not perfect, but for purposes of this demo, it is. So you now you can see they have a lot of these areas that have now been removed. You don't see these little cut lines or plastic lines everywhere. It makes it a little bit more realistic, a little bit more believable. Actually, I'm going to do two more areas and I'll call it a day for that. Now, the gun. Perfect. Really, this comes down to personal taste. I, Like I said, I don't like having cut lines. I really despise them. Actually, that's not a... Yeah, it's a cut line. So, in this case, it's not working the way I want. So, I'm just going to use the create new layer here. And then... Just blend it all across. Now I like that. It's the best way of doing this. And then I'll just plan that out. Good for now. There's another one right behind it I don't like. Make sure when you're doing this to use the sample all layers um, selected. That way it's it's not selecting just whatever layer it's on. Otherwise it's not going to work. Right. A little bit of a cleanup there. That's pretty good. Um, I can go on forever and make um, adjustments to this literally all freaking day. Alright, whatever. 
for now. That's good enough. So now that I have that, I'm going to put all my other layers back on. That I have. And bam. Now I have all that without the like, stupid cut lines everywhere. And now put my rustic back on. I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to just select this by clicking control and left click. I'm going to add my uh, brightness contrast to that. Click it and one second you do that, it automatically takes the same position, the same mask as the other one. And I want to have maybe a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit more contrasty because under paint, you'll do a bit more contrasty than the over paint. That I can kind of adjust how metallic it looks because metal tends to look a little bit different. I really don't like that too much. You can also kind of do a double take on this where the edges are a little bit more metallic. I'll show you that now. Actually wrong brush. Right brush. Like one of the, any of these kind of brushes will be fine. No, I should, I should even make add some there too. Kind of like that. Right on these edge lines. Perfect. That's nice. I like that. Anyways, um, kind of have it maybe a little even more crazier where the metal is too shaded. If you want to get really crazy, if you watch paint. You'll ever see paint. It kind of looks in a similar fashion as well. It'll never be evenly coat, evenly coated on all sides. You could do that as well. But for this, I may just delete some of it. I could go back and kind of do it on both layers, but for now I'm just kind of like messing it up a little bit, make it a little bit more ridiculous. Whatever, for that it's fine. Now, what else does this need? Now, as you can see with the original version of it, I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of lens flares. Now that's really, really stupid simple to do. Actually, you know, let's do the glow. Glow is very obvious too. Um, I'm going to do an adjustment layer. Actually, what I will do, a thousand ways of doing this. As you can see, I didn't really put his eyes in the right place. His eyes are a little bit too high, but just for interpretation purposes, I'm just going to create a little bit of a fake eye here. All right. And let's dip it down to blue. If you don't get the color right, don't worry. You know, it was just a layer, it was adjustment layer, or just fill it with a different color. So there you go. Primes in, I1. Um, let's do another fake eye. Actually, fake eye is kind of more here. So I will adjust it later on. Bingo, and I'm gonna just delete a little bit here. Maybe. There. So it's not a perfect guy. I don't really care right now to make it that perfect. I've already done this stuff enough. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And um, fill it in. Whichever way you want. Right? And then what you do, in this case, I'm going to use one of the outer glow techniques. So you click on the outer glow. Um, and find the glow color you want. In this case, I want to have it more... Same tone, same color, but then maybe a little bit brighter. Um, click on color dodge and make sure it's just the right brightness that you want and the right height size that you want. I don't have it too much. And then you can either do something like that. I'm going to just blur it a little bit um, just so it blends in a little bit more. Um, blur, gosh, and blur. Perfect. Kind of a little bit different than the other one. A little bit too bright, so I'm going to maybe change it to normal. I'm going to, let's say, make that a little bit brighter inside. So I'm going to do hue saturation in there and spread it up a little. 
Perfect. Maybe lower this. Um, just size wise. I don't want that big. Just fool around kind of with, until you get it the way you really want it to look. And bam. I like that this time. A little bit different than the other one, but whatever. So I have this pretty much kind of looking at the way I want it to be. It's not 100%. There's a lot of things, things I can change. I actually kind of want the background light, the light that's coming from the back. Where are you? Um, kind of want this to be a little bit more con more uh, contrasty. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer on that again and just brighten it up just a bit. So you can see what I mean by once you do that, it affects this stuff. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to make this a little bit bluer too. I'll fix it in a second. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to redo that in a second, but whatever. For now, I'm going to leave it like that. I want it a little bit, little bit more brighter and contrasty. That's why it's always kind of best to do at the end, not the beginning. Bingo. So it's a little bit more contrasty, and I want it to be a different color. So I'm going to do the color balance on this case. And I'll a little bit more crazier blue. I also want it a little bit different from the other version I did. And highlights. Perfect. I like it a little bit more, a little bit more blue tint into it. But like I said, it changes the way you have all these cut lines. So I would have to go back and I would have to redo those just because the lighting has now changed. So like I said, it's best to do this once you're the last thing you do. Um, it's best to do it the last thing. That way you don't have to like redo this if you change something up too much. Bingo. And I'll do it over here one more time. Kind of done like that. I'm going to go two hog wild on it there. So bingo, there you go. So you have a little bit more of a different look with the lighting from the background. So essentially what I would have done in this case, you know, even still, I would sometimes go back so I know, you know, what color I had in the background there, what colors you're trying to affect. Even there's a little bit of a hot spot in there with the color dodge. A bit too bright. And kind of see where I'm going with that. So yeah, I kind of have three lights. I kind of have the bottom light um, on here. So the bottom light's kind of a yellow. I don't like it. The only thing I don't like right now is it's not hot enough. It's a little bit too bland. So I can kind of bring it up a little bit differently this for the next part of that. Um, should have a technique in order to do that. But yes, that's kind of how you do it. Now it's gonna show you how to blend the ground here. So let's get rid of this um, light. So let's pick a regular color. And I'm going to show you how to blend. Make sure you're, um, whenever you're making these type of things, for now, actually, you know what? Just going to put a ground play on here so it kind of looks like something. I'm not going to do the whole, uh, just do the complete thing again. I'm just going to put like a regular background floor on here. So I'm just going to put a floor. It doesn't matter what kind of floor. I don't really feel like doing the whole thing. Whatever. And I, in the future, I will definitely do a tutorial on how to do this stuff correctly. But for now, I'm just going to show you a basic, basic version of it. Blend all this out. Don't need it. Whatever. But it's kind of like pretty much little versions of this where you kind of go through, find the colors and the stuff you want, where you want it. The two brides are too dark. 
right? So now I want to do just to show you this real quick is how to integrate the object with its ground plane. Um, let's change this off a little bit here too. Let me set that part. How to add the object to fit to the ground plane correctly, and that's basically what you need to do is create shadows. But you need to do the shadows in such a way that it looks um, realistic. You can't just have shadows just being there. You can have just a black spot. Um, you need to make sure that it's following where the lights are coming from. What's your strongest light? What's your second strongest light? The, uh, how close is the object? Uh, so on and so forth. So the easiest way to do that is pick a nice soft brush. So shadows tend to have just two levels of a shadow. Um, there is its core shadow, which is where it hits the ground plane. And the second shadow is from the, the actual direction of the light that's hitting it. So the, for the core shadow, I'm just gonna just real quickly, um, I'll just click on a black. And I'm just gonna go in and just more of a harsher brush and then paint in where I think that core shadow is gonna be. So by doing so, it makes it look like it's part of the ground plane rather than just floating in the air. Now you just gotta go back a little bit, right? And then just paint it in the way you want. Like I said, I'm not using a Wacom, just a regular brush and just follow the lines of the object you're trying to paint like that. The trial and error until you get exactly the way you want it to look brush and then use the eraser tool in this thing, in this case and bingo we got a core shadow so that's the point at which it's hitting the actual ground um it's still not as precise as i like to do it right now but it's kind of how it works and the shadow you're going to have technically supposed to be under it like this because it's more diffuse so you want to have a more of a diffuse shadows in here because you're getting a diffused light technically since this shadow is since this is so directly close to it this light would technically be a little bit harsher but i don't want it to be too harsh um sometimes i don't really see it like that so the light's coming from this direction so i'm going to put it a little bit different than the one i did before so light's coming from here and you kind of want to follow wherever you think your object is going to be casting a shadow it's really going to be a long shadow since it's a huge object and i know this is going to be similar to that if you're supposed to do this again something like that is where you probably have your shadows it would probably be a little bit harsher more like this and you can kind of just take your eraser and then fade it out as it gets farther from the object it's going to kind of fade out a little bit more like that not too much um right and you're also going to get a little bit of shadow coming from the other side because this is a huge object. It's not like it's a just going this direction. You're going to kind of have shadows laying on all sides. And you want to have it just a little bit of a cast shadow. Um, and just fade it out just a little bit. It doesn't have to be too much. And once you have it the way you want it to look... Um, Right. This really becomes a lot of trial and error sometimes just to make it the way you want it to be. Right. Just play around. Perfect. There you go. Now, like I said, I could spend all day trying to get this to work the way I want 100%, but for now, that's kind of the way I'm going to make it look. So now you don't want to have it too bright. Since you're getting a lot of ambient light from different areas, you don't want to have it too dark in here kind of want to have it just a little bit brighter so that's usually you want to keep your core shadow normal this is a little bit darker but then this one here you want to maybe just fade it out just a little bit and usually actually the best way to do this would be to fade it out with a brush because what happens is it's, as you get dark farther away from the object the lighting is going to get so it'll be darker here and lighter here so be about 50 percent something like that and then same with this let's lower this just a little bit more especially in this background image here 
There you go. And then the last one, and that leaves the same. Usually shadows aren't going to be the color of... It's not going to be black, but in this case, it's going to work. Usually, sometimes shadows are whatever the ambient color is. So if the color is day is blue, the shadow will be more of a blue tone. But I can add that later on with a post effect that's going to make it look a little bit better. So I kind of like the way this is looking now, just overall. Um, there's a few things you could do, but I want to kind of almost finish this up here. So looking at this, it's starting to look a lot like um, this prime, but you can see the colors are a little bit different here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, a post filter. So what I like to do is make things look a little bit cooler rather than just bland. I'm going to add a post effect just so it looks a little bit um, more like Hollywood. In, in movies, they tend to use a lot of these colors, the greens and blues and yellows make it a little bit more grungy looking. So I'm kind of going to do the same here with that. Um, so what you use, use the color balance. And use the color balance. It's going to be an overall color balance on the entire image. I'm going to make it a little bit more green. Um, actually, steel blue. And then in the highlights, figure out whatever color I want. Maybe that. Just kind of play around, find the colors you like. It's all up to you here. It's just really a matter of kind of like that. Maybe a little bit more green in the midtones and the shadow highlights. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's kind of all right. If it was a full image, it'd be a little bit more different when I had if I had more textures and. Background image will look a bit more cleaner. Um, but for now, we are almost done. So what I also do in these images is I create another post effect. This one is just to make it um, pop. So we see, as you can see with this image, it has, you can see a lot of the details in the, the undertones, the darker areas, a little bit crisper image. So I'm gonna kind of create the same effect here. So the easiest way to do that is I want to merge all these layers into one layer. Then what I do is this control, you see old shift control alt, I think it's E. No, wrong one. Shift control alt E on a PC and it will create a copy of the entire image that you have here. Next thing I do is I kind of go to camera raw filter. I find this has the best effects on it. Easy to use. Don't have to think too much about it. And what I do now is I kind of Bump up the clarity. See, it creates a nice little bit of clear, more uh, contrast to your rougher look. And I open up the shadows just a bit, just to create a nice, cool effect right there. See? All of a sudden, it starts to look a little bit fresher, a little bit more interesting rather than just um, flat, right? Now, what I'm going to add here now is two more effects and I should be done. So the next effect I'm going to add is some lens flares. Lens flares makes everything look um, amazing because it gives the Hollywood look, uh, the Michael Bay look as a lot of people like to call it. Uh, so let's find some of these. Um, I have a whole pack of them. And, but my favorite is this one here. I use it pretty much everything I do. So pretty much just take it over. Bingo Bango, actually, no, it should be fine. Bingo Bango, right? Get your lens flares out. What I do for this, um, so I don't ruin the, the, the quality of the um, the lens flare, is I usually make it into a um, convert to smart object. That way, when I'm distorting and stuff like that, I can re distort it without having to worry. So I'm just going to rotate it around here. So I'm going to put them, you basically want to put them wherever there's a big highlight coming from your object. I kind of, you want to start usually around here. I have a highlight right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the overlay. It's going to be the linear dodge and put it where you think you want it to be. As big as, as small as you want. And sometimes I like, I don't like having the edges bleed too much. 
this is a, there's other ways of doing this. I'll show you a different way of doing this um, with the same kind of object. I pick it again, move it wherever I want. Actually, I'm gonna put another one here, just a little bit smaller. But whenever you have a light source, wherever the light source is bleeding is is concentrated is where the light is gonna bleed the most or be brighter. So for instance, if I have another light source on this edge here where it bleeds in, it's gonna be like there and maybe on the guns. So you see this huge highlight on this gun. So you're gonna have a huge bloom on here as well. And I'm just gonna fade it in there. Nope, wrong brush. I'm gonna do a fade in here, just so it doesn't bleed too much. And there you go. And that's kind of how I have it. And I'm gonna put one more. I like having it here, so this is in that metally area. It's a huge highlighty metally area. Blend that in, not too much. Bingo. There you go. So now you have that nice metallic look on it. Like I said, adding effects to these things makes makes it look really, really cool without having to worry too much about um, not to worry too much about the other things. All right, cool. So. I can add more highlights anywhere I want, whatever. It's not that important right now. Um, I don't think I put an effect back on here. I may have lost an effect. Whatever, it's actually added back in real quick. Since it's near the end of the process, I'm not going to go back. But you can see I totally forgot to uh, put something back here. So I'm just going to redo this area. You're always going to make mistakes. You'll get used to it. Or forget to do something. Nothing it never happens in a perfect um, linear fashion. But for now, it's pretty good. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I don't feel like going back and fixing that. But you get the idea, kind of what you're looking for. Um, you know, a lot of these things actually really irritating me in some of these areas. Let's go back and fix that again. And do do do. do. Nothing's going to be perfect. Like I said, it's always better just at the end as well, so. Uh, let's see if we can get rid of this again. No. Whatever. Uh, I don't really feel like going back and fixing it. It's not that big of a deal for me right now. It's not a deal breaker. It just works. Or showing you how to do that process anyways. But that's kind of what you do. So the only thing I'm going to add here is one more effect. Um, I'm, just do, I'm just going to merge it down, all this stuff here, one more time. Uh, usually I'd merge it completely down and do this, but just for this purposes, I'm going to merge it down. So this now has one giant layer again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some glow areas to it to create a little bit more contrast. Like I said here, this I don't like. It's not glowing enough for me. So there's a couple different ways of doing this. What I'm gonna do is find this brush. I'm gonna call it color dodge it. Yeah. Usually you want to color dodge in an area similar to the same color. So let's say let's put green, maybe a little bit more yellowy orange. Whatever. And since our filter's already on. And go a little bit dark, a little bit lower up opacity, and kind of just hit it up. A little bit like that and punch it up and punch it where you think it needs to be punched like right here it's more direct uh, direct maybe not so much here should be a little bit more direct um, now it's direct there I can go crazy this is the other way of putting the highlights on things as well and then kind of punch up areas you think need to be punched up Maybe a little bit of highlight here, and then I'll move a little highlight in that corner. Perfect. Now you kind of have a, more of a realistic version of what you want here. Now I can also color dodge, color burn this actually. 
Now the way of doing this is also using the burn tool. Just the burn tool and 50% lower. Just burn it a little bit. Uh, get a little more contrast in the in certain areas that you want. Uh, kind of want to work on that tone there. Not liking that completely, but the great thing is you have a mask and it's already dunder it already. I can kind of do, 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 do. lower it where I want again and kind of to get what kind of what I'm looking for. So that's kind of how you do most of it. Like I said, next time, I think I'm pretty much done anyways. So next time I will show you the entire process of how to do compositing if I have some time. But for now, you kind of get the general idea of how you get light sources, how you get directions, um, blending it in, making things look a bit more interesting uh, than just having a flat um, image. So next time, maybe I'll do that. All right, this is the end of it. Have a good night.